Hello and welcome back to another week of Weather or Not podcast. I'm your host, meteorologist Scott Sumner. Starting on a dare, in the middle of World War II, Major Joe Duckworth took a training aircraft into the eye of a hurricane twice, starting the eventual evolution of aircraft to fly into one of nature's most devastating weather phenomena. Notice here, the growing need to learn more about tropical systems became the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron's, or WRS's, job as they flew on many missions collecting data post-World War II. Their nickname became Hurricane Hunters and was painted on the unit's aircraft. A national plan to track storms gradually became a reality in June of 1947, and that was manned by the Air Force, Navy, and Weather Bureau. In 1975, a branch of the Air Force Reserve called Storm Trackers, well, they joined the forces with the 53 WRS and shared the responsibility of tracking tropical storms. Now, in 1991, the 53rd WRS succumbed to budget cuts, and the Storm Trackers, well, they changed their name back to Hurricane Hunters. The WC-130J aircraft primarily does the task of gathering weather information from tropical cyclones. This aircraft can fly at a cruising speed of more than 300 miles an hour, covers approximately 3,500 miles in one trip, and is capable of staying in the air for 18 hours. The WC-130J carries a minimal crew of five. A pilot, a co-pilot, a navigator, aerial reconnaissance weather officer, and weather reconnaissance loadmaster. Now, the aerial reconnaissance weather officer operates the computerized weather reconnaissance equipment and acts as flight director in the storm environment, while the weather officer evaluates other meteorological conditions such as turbulence, icing, visibility, cloud types and amounts, and ocean surface winds. Another critical piece of weather equipment on board the WC-130J aircraft is the Dropson system, and the GPS Dropson is a cylindrical-shaped instrument about 16 inches long, three and, a five, three and a half inches in diameter, and weighs approximately about two and a half pounds. And that's seen there behind me. The drop sign is equipped with a high frequency radio and is dropped within the eye and eye wall of hurricanes, providing a direct reading of surface pressure. As the instrument descends to the sea surface, it measures and relays to the aircraft a vertical atmospheric profile of the temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and wind data. This drop sign information is slowed and stabilized by a small parachute, with one of them dropped approximately every 450 miles en route to and from the storm. Now, this drop sign system operator receives, analyzes, and codes the data for transmission via satellite, and this collected data is relayed directly to the National Hurricane Center in Miami. Hurricane forecasts have improved markedly since the 1970s and it has been due to many factors. But when it comes to the multiplicity of data collected on the aircraft, I will discuss the four primary types of information that are used to help improve forecasting tropical systems, and they are, once again, drops on data, RICO observations, supplementary vortex data, and vortex data. Now, the drops on data, as mentioned earlier, measures the vertical profile from the hurricane's eye to its outer cloud bands. The process is similar to a weather balloon, except the drop sign goes down instead of up. As the aircraft, WC-130J aircraft, always approaches a storm from the same direction, i.e. northwest to southeast, then northeast to southwest, for continuity's sake in each quadrant, pressure, temperature, wind speed, clouds, and turbulence are recorded. The supplementary vortex data also deals with information coming in from the four quadrants, as its primary pur purpose is to find the extent of a storm's damaging winds. All this data is gathered in two parts, with the first being the aircraft's journey into the eye, and the second as the aircraft departs through the opposite quadrant. The vortex data summarizes all the aforementioned information, which includes the location of the storm's eye, the minimum central pressure, maximum winds, on the way into the eye and temperatures inside and outside of the eye wall. Thanks to a dare just 80 years ago, the Hurricane Hunters team along with the National Hurricane Center have helped to improve the safety of the public from dangers, from the danger of nature's greatest furies. That's all for this week here. I'm meteorologist Scott Sumner. As always, God bless, be well, stay safe, and we'll see you next week.